Bruce Dickinson nombra sus álbumes favoritos. Rock, obviously Mount Rushmore, the the the, the copy of Mount Rushmore with all the band in the, you know, the Mark II, Deep Purple, very classic, amazing album, great great cover. The first time I met Ian Gillan, he, uh, he he said I was an amazing singer, and then I went into the toilets and I vomited everywhere and. He uh, put me in a taxi and sent me home after wiping my face. <laughs> It's true. Oh, Aqualung, fantastic. The old overcoat and, uh, and everything. I, I, I didn't realize until I read the, the, the credits that his wife, his first wife, uh, wrote the lyrics to Aqualung. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing album. It's almost, for me, it's his... It's his most perfect album, you know. And I, I love a lot of his records, you know. But that for Aqualung, for me, probably because it was, in a way, my first, you know. Oh, Arthur Brown, yeah. It's maybe not the greatest cover in the world, uh, but it's one of the great albums for me. Uh, one of the first concept albums ever, um, produced by, uh, among others, Pete Townsend of the Who. Um, and it's uh, a, a uh, it's a concept album about a man's descent into hell, uh, and of course the most famous track, um, you know, Fire off that record. But the whole album is kind of very psychedelic and trippy. And it's only a three-piece band: uh, Arthur, plus a drummer, and a keyboard player. So no guitar, nothing. There's Vincent Crane on keyboards, played for Atomic Rooster, and then it's Carl Palmer on drums who obviously went on to do Emerson, Lake and Palmer, you know, so it's a crazy band. I met Arthur years after I saw him when I was like 15 years old, I was on, and I saw Arthur, he came to my school and did a gig uh, with a project called Arthur Brown's Kingdom Come. He had an album called Journey, which was funnily enough, that was produced by a guy called Dave Edmonds, who was like this rockabilly guy that played stuff for Rockpile, yeah. anyway. Um, it was an electronic type album um, and Arthur came and then years later, maybe, you know, 30, 30 years later, uh, there he was at the local mairie in, where I live and he was doing a gig. I couldn't believe it. So we started talking and I said, I saw you all these years and now I'm a rock singer and I, because of you, you know, at least partly. Um, so yeah, we, we uh, kept in touch and um, Yeah, I worked with, I asked him to do some spoken word on the, the chemical wedding, yeah. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, just, it, 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 it's, it's ACDC, what can I say? We're Bon Scott. I mean, and for me, I've got to say, I like what ACDC are doing now with Brian Johnson, with the, the latest albums. I like that more than Hell's Bells and, uh, and definitely more than For Those About to Rock. They've kind of taken back control of their sound and changed it slightly for, to suit Brian's voice. But the first years with Bon uh, up till, you know, the end of Highway to Hell, wow. And that live album, If you want blood, you got it. God, that's just incredible. So yeah, that lineup and Bo Bon, Bon was just a tragedy when that happened. It shouldn't have happened. No, Sin City is okay. Some of them are hard to sing. I mean, because Bon had a much, a, 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 a kind of interesting voice, uh, but he, he, it was very, very flexible. His voice, you know, um, and uh, it was a strange mixture. Of, of styles in his voice, you know, and uh, but there was some blues in there. He could do really good blues. One of my favorite ACDC songs is a uh, it's called Ride On, and it's got this heartbreaking guitar solo. It sounds like he's like channeling Paul Kossoff from Free in the guitar pit. I mean, it's great. I love that song, you know. Yes, I know the secret. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, you know, I was a kid and and got this album, and uh, and 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 I was still a virgin, which made me open it up and go, oh my God, look at those women, right? 
And uh, yeah, so, but what a great record. What a great album. What a great comeback album, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, the first two records are amazing. Well, no, I mean, volume four was incredible as well, you know. Um, uh, what a consistent band, you know. I mean, and it's Geezer and Tony. You know, I mean, if you look at all the people, all the different vocalists, not just Ozzy, but they've all been, uh, Born Again, great album. You know, everybody goes, oh, forget that one. No, it's a great album. Oh, yes. So, um, for me, that was the record where I discovered Ronnie, Ronnie Dio on vocals. I was like, who is, who is that voice? You know, and I was... I was like 16 years old, you know, and, and go, what the hell, that's Richie Blackmore. And I didn't know that Rainbow like kind of existed. And it was on a little transistor radio in a garage. And I went, that sounds like Richie Blackmore. And I waited till it finished. And the guy said, that was Rainbow and Stargazer. I went, oh my God, you know. It's one of the shortest albums ever made. You know, it's like 35 minutes long, the whole album. But it's a classic. I'll take that over a 90 minute long, boring yawn fest. Six really incredible songs that changed the face of music. It really did. That was, that was a game changer. Um, and um, it gets not enough respect from people outside of the metal world. I loved Graham Bonnet as on Down to Earth. I mean, um, uh, um, you know, Eyes of the World is one of my favorite like rainbow songs, bar none. Uh, Lost in Hollywood, Eyes of the World. I mean, since you've been gone, mm, yeah, okay. Uh, but 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 Eyes of the World to me is just oh, it's fantastic, you know. The world like a oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. What 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 can you say? Judas Priest. They had that's a, that's that's one of their best covers, you know. They they had a very mixed. <laughs> mixed uh, I found their covers confusing I'm like what is this you know I mean uh, you know point of entry I'm like what is this you know um, that one you know what that is that, 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 that's obviously a metal record it's obviously got an edge to it it's got something to it um, for me I, I really I actually got really started getting into Priest when I toured with them so I was quite a late, I mean, I, I knew who they were, I, you know, Sad Wings of Destiny, all that stuff. But I really started to understand what they were about when I toured with them with Maiden. And it was on the um, Screaming for Vengeance tour. God, what a record that was. And then all the stuff before. I mean, Adrian was very into Priest, um, you know, more so than me. But then when I saw them live, I was like, yeah, these guys are really cool. <laughs> Yeah, Queen's right, Operation Mind Crime. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. So again, for me, this was, um, this was uh, uh, one of those records that is like unique. Um, other people have tried to do, you know, similar things, but it, Mind Crime is, is like, it's just perfect. It, 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 you know, and so intelligent. And the weird thing is, the, the guitar player who wrote pretty much most of that record, I think he did one more album, and then he just left and disappeared and actually became a commercial pilot. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> a, big, a big gap for the album cover. It's just been three silhouettes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad title for an album, isn't it? Three silhouettes. <laughs> three shadows, the three shadows, you know. Uh, but no, I mean, and maybe one day, but I don't know who you would do it with. My God, this, this, I, I think of a lot of my favorite singers and a lot of them are dead, which is depressing. You know, I mean, Ronnie, he's gone. Um, Chris Cornell, he's gone. Wow, what a voice he had, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know if anybody wanted to do it again. I am. I don't know where the I don't know where that would come from, you know, anymore. It was a nice idea though. Oh yes, there we go. Yeah. So yeah, the concerto. 
So um, I had a lot of fun with with that with that record. So I learnt a lot on the record. John Lord was a friend of mine, um, and we were discussing the idea of uh, going out on tour together, me and him, uh, me doing some singing and him doing some conducting. Um, and we would do, uh, I think uh, we were planning on doing like Jerusalem and Tears of the Dragon and stuff, as well as other things that he would do. And um, then unfortunately he got uh, ill with pancreatic cancer. And that's when that record was, uh, was probably that was when that re-recording was done in the studio. Um, so that's where I met Paul Mann, the conductor. Uh, and John was, John was quite ill during the record. He didn't act like he was ill, but he was obviously very thin. But it was a um, very emotional time. And he was a very beautiful man with a very great sense of humor, even at that moment in his life. Uh, and then a couple, few years later, Paul Mann, the, the, the conductor, phoned me up and said, would you like to come to Quebec? and do two shows for the 50th anniversary of the concerto. And I went, yeah. So there I was and I did some purple songs and the next thing I'm doing a little eight date tour, nine date tour of, of, of the Eastern Europe and South America with an orchestra and I loved it. And I met Tanya and, and I said, what are you doing next? next year and she went I don't know I went come out with me and play bass so now there she is so all, all things are connected you know ah oh, there you go yeah yeah it's um, yeah it's uh, it's it's it, it, it's a load of rubbish but it grows on you 